Hey, what's up, guys? And welcome to the weekly highlight show where we talk about the best, the worst, the winners, and the losers of this week's episodes of Days of Our Lives, Journal Hospital, and The Bold and the Beautiful. And before I get into the review of Bold fans, I just realized after a few hours after I posted my review that I totally forgot to talk about the flashback of Eric back in the day, him, Donna, him, um, Stephanie and stuff. Loved those. It was, um, it was fun to watch that stuff from before my time and some stuff I saw myself. <clears throat> but anyways, my bad. Um, <laughs> now let's get into the winners of this week. Speaking of Bold and Beautiful, I give the winner of the week to Eric Forster. Um, yeah, you might not say that if you watch the show. Oh, but hey, he got to live, go out the way that he wanted to. You know, he accepted his diagnosis and lived the best way that he could. You know, he didn't let the um, <clears throat> doctors poke and prod him, bringing all the specialists from around the world to try to, um, you know, just tell him differently or, you know, experiment on what could or couldn't be um, happening with him, you know, and his family, you know, respected his wishes for the most part. <laughs> I mean, they kept telling each other, but they didn't tell him that he, um, that they know that he was dying. So that was good for them. Um, <laughs> and um, he got to have his party that he wanted to have, even though he was on some oxygen right before the party. And he's got hot Donna as a girlfriend who stand by his side regardless of what was going down with them. Donna, Logan, like, <clears throat> poster chick for ride or die, definitely. <laughs> and the winners, I say, from General Hospital, Mr. Brennan, or Brennan, it, I'm wondering if that's his first name or last name. But anyways, we're just calling him Brittany now. Um, <laughs> and I found out where I know him from. He's from Desperate Housewives. <laughs> he played in a few other shows that I watched, but he played on the last season of Desperate Housewives. Um, really kind of like an asshole real estate agent, um, real estate guy. Um, and that's saying a lot for that show. A lot of assholes on that show. But anyways, that's another video. <clears throat> um, yeah, he played Ben Faulkner. See, I wrote it down. See, that's what happens when I write notes. I remember stuff. <laughs> but anyways, he has Anna and Sonny exactly where he wants them in the palm of his hands. And they have no clue that he's even coming. They don't know nothing about him. He killed Forsyth for being a dumbass and not doing what he was supposed to do. Um, <clears throat> I'm still wondering if he's the one that ran him down or he just had somebody run him down. But anyways, that's still funny. Uh, <clears throat> was able to get away from Robert. Yeah, he was sitting at Kelly's talking it up with Carly and then Robert and Diane came in and he's like, oh, Robert knows me, so I'm just going to sneak out. Yeah, and apologized for Carly to Carly with some flowers and um possible love interests. I mean I know she's with Drew, but you know, come on. Brendan is very handsome man. Very um rich, handsome super spy, as Carly thought that he was a super spy. So hmm, maybe, maybe. I actually enjoy their chemistry. I like it. It's kinda cute. Yeah. And uh <clears throat> Carly could definitely use um another bad guy in her life because you know that's what attracts her. Drew's kinda weak. But anyways, I digress. Uh, not only that, but he's very handsome. Nice suits. I definitely like that. Definitely. <clears throat> anyway. On to Days of Our Lives winner. I give it to Everett Lynch. Yeah, I give it to him. Because um, he was able to solve a case, you know, faster than the Salem PD. Um, he found that Chad was the one that bought Gwen shares. Well, first of all, he got fired and he didn't just accept that he was fired. He went out and found out why he was fired. He talked to Gwen and found out she sold her, uh, sold her shares. So then he was trying to figure out who she sold them to. And, um... Of course, Stephanie helped out a little because, you know, she did call her Uncle Shane um, for help. But then um, he found out it was Shad. 
and I'm trying to figure out did he purposely really wanted to not have Steffi know that was Chad or did he just really wanted her to know but was trying to act like he didn't want to know but anyway she found um Stephanie found out and she confronted Chad and moved out <laughs> while Chad was um what was Chad still doing Chad wasn't home yet um, oh, he went to go tell, he talked, that's right, Chad went to go, I, in my notes right here, Chad confronted Everett and told him he'll give him his job back, just be honest, and Everett was honest, I appreciate your honesty, just like Chad does, <laughs> I appreciate your honesty, you know, <clears throat> don't, don't beat around the bush, just admit what you want, you want Stephanie back, you know, go get her, why not? <laughs> Lordy, but oh, and also Stephanie's threw in Chad's face to be like, oh, you know, at least Everett wants to marry me. And she tried to take it back, like she didn't really mean it, but check, I know that you really meant that. <laughs> Everett doesn't know that she did that, but you know, it's only a matter of time. Everybody finds out about everything in Salem, gossiping ass town. Anyways, <laughs> so there's your chance. No, that, but I was just thinking, you know, Jada knows, um, we know now for a fact that, um, Everett is Jada's ex-husband, and he was the editor of Spectator, so I'm sure his name was on the article, so that just, um, shows that Jada doesn't read the Spectator. Yeah. Anyways, I just, I, I thought about that before I started doing this review, I was like, oh, um, I'll bring that up somehow in this video. Anyways, on to the losers of the week. I have to give it to my girl, Nicole Demira on Days of Our Lives. Actually, I was going back and forth between her and Dimitri, but, um, I just really can't. She just got kicked in the ass, like, triple E times <laughs> this week. Poor thing. <clears throat> she swore up and down that baby Jude, I'm still not sure about that name, was hers, but was proven wrong, even though we know that, you know, he is hers. And, um, because she didn't have enough DNA on her toothbrush. So Kayla decided to use EJ's Demir, um, EJ's Dem Demir, EJ's, Demir, EJ's DNA from the genetic testing to, um, use to, um, for the testing. That's not fair. Instead of using, asking Nicole for a DNA sample, you know, it's like they could have stuck something up her nose, take some blood, you know, anything. But they decided just to, you know, hey, let's just go on the files, get, you know, whatever EJ had on file or whatever he did to for the genetic testing. Just so wrong. And then she apologized. To Salon and Eric for, you know, dragging their baby into all of this. But it is her baby. <laughs> like, really? And Salon's just, you know, lying about this. Not like that, but um, <clears throat> Salon just had to point out. Well, I'll, okay, I'll get to that in a second. But anyways, um, her hubby EJ wants to try and have another baby. <laughs> Nicole said, what? You want to try to knock me up for uh, the fifth time? <laughs> fourth time, sorry, fourth time. They lost two babies, and then they thought this was their um, third, and then this would be the fourth. <sighs> Lordy. <laughs> she just had to tell him that, you know, it's just not in the cards for us to have a baby. <sighs> so sad. Anyways, and, um, but... At least um, Dimitri turned himself in, but then again, Dimitri didn't actually kill her baby. He just handed her off. He, he just handed him off to his demented ass stepmommy. <laughs> oh, Lordy. And on uh, General Hospital, I gave it to my girl on General Hospital, Anna Devane. She had a breakup with her lying ass boyfriend, Valentine. She had to talk to her friend Felicia about it and then go see his lying ass. And then he looking all mean like he's mad at her. Like, um, you the one that messed this shit up, you know. Anyways. Then she finds out that she was right about foresight, but he's dead now, so she didn't get a chance to confront him or kill him or find out exactly why is he coming after her now. I don't know. 
But um, yeah, he's dead. And the um, WSB came in and took his body and everything that went along with his um, that was with his death. Except for the key that Dante kept that he didn't even tell Anna about. She still doesn't know about the lock key, which is good. Anyways, um, <clears throat> she has no clue that, you know, this is just the beginning. You know, because as I said, Brennan, he's after her too. Uh, not just her, but Sunny as well. And um, Beth living at the Metro Court because her house burned down and then, you know, she shot her lion ass boyfriend's demon child in her living room speaking of which maxie still needs to find somebody to sublet her apartment i'm guessing um charlotte's out of the charlotte's out of the picture or maybe that's esme's new apartment <laughs> esme did move that maybe that maybe she's moving into maxie's i don't know if laura won her grandson living where her granddaughter got shot but you know, it's general hospital. You know, there's not many places you can go that somebody didn't get shot. So, I don't know. <laughs> and where she has to keep repeating everything that happens to her or that she finds out to everybody that she knows. Like I said, girl, just have one big gathering. You know, invite Dante, Felicia, Robert, Sonny, Curtis, Jordan. Um, I'm sure I'm forgetting um, somebody. No, you can't invite Valentine because you don't trust his lying ass, so you don't get to come. Anyways, and I'm bold and beautiful. I mean, well, there was much winners on the show, but you know, everybody was a loser because they were losing Eric. But I gave it to Eric Forster. I think that was the first time somebody's been a winner and a loser this week. But anyways, Eric gets it because he uh, died. Maybe. I don't know. That was the cliffhanger from Friday. So, you know, we have to wait some money to know for sure. But um, and, but the worst part about it is, you know, he never did get his extra dry martini. I'm like, that's just so messed up. He's dying. Let him have the alcohol. <laughs> Anyways. And also, he kept saying that Steffi, his ex-wife, Stephanie... He felt her presence. And I'm sure Stephanie is not in heaven. So he's trying to say he's going to end up in hell. But, I mean, <laughs> I don't know Stephanie all that well. Because, you know, I, I, I'm i still new to Bold and Beautiful. But from the, some of the stuff I've seen and heard that she's done, I don't think she she's up there with Jesus. But anyways. Anyways. Um, on to assholes of the week. Third week in a row. <laughs> Simone Peterson definitely gets it for Days of Our Lives because who else be more of an asshole not only on this show but on soaps in general right now but yeah she left Leo and Dimitri to, de 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 to deal with EJ so she can go and see what's up with this DNA test leaving them to EJ, who wants to lock them both up, you know, just like scratch the deal, rip up the papers, toss them in the air, like it's New Year's Eve. <laughs> oh, Lord. and then she had enough not to act offended when Nicole accused her of stealing her baby. Really? But you know that you stole the baby. Nicole doesn't know that for a fact now because you are lucky with the DNA test, but you know, eventually she's gonna find out. I'm just saying, you know, it's Salem. Everybody finds out about something. And Dimitri and Leo already know, so it's eventually somebody else is going to know and steal the beans. I'm just saying. And then when Kayla says that they use EJ's DNA, which I was just saying I'll get to in <laughs> So Lone's like, you know, Nicole, you know, there was no doubt that EJ was your baby's father, right? And so Nicole's had to be like, yeah, so I was like, okay. So it doesn't matter if it was your DNA used or EJ's DNA used. Oh, well, the baby's not yours. Bye-bye. I'm going to go home with your ex-husband, father flip-flop, and your baby. Ha, ha, ha. She might as well have just said that shit. And, <laughs> and Cole walked away upset and Salome so still didn't care, you know, and... Nicole apologized. Like I said, she apologized. 
<sighs> and then goes home and has nine to ask Eric if he believes that she could be some um, depraved baby stealer. You are, bitch! You are some depraved baby snatcher. Like, seriously. Oh, lordy. I don't expect Eric to go off on Sloan, but if Nicole don't, I call bullshit on this damn story. Anyways, um, during a hospital, I give it to, well, I was gonna give it to Adam, but then I'm like, hell no, his dad is even more of an asshole. <laughs> but uh, uh, Adam's up there too, but you know, Adam calls and tells his dad that he got a 97. Awesome! Any normal parents would be, be over the moon that their child did so well. But no, what does his ass do? He's upset that, you know, he's questioning a makeup test. That's all I can say. <laughs> well, of course, we didn't hear his voice, but, you know, from what Adam says is that he's focused on the fact that it was a makeup test. And then Adam comes in with the assholiness line saying that he had to help his friend Jocelyn, leaving out the fact that he was the one that took the drugs and Jocelyn had to take him to the hospital. And Jocelyn was very, very nice about it and just told him, don't lie about her. And then told him, well, I don't think she actually told him to leave. He left on his own. But Jocelyn was really good about that. I, I applaud her because I would have kicked his ass out. Literally kicked him in his ass and told him, don't come back to my damn dorm room again. <sighs> but Jocelyn, like I said, Jocelyn. Oh, let me stop repeating myself. But Jocelyn is a good one for that. But anyways, I'm going to beautiful. Nobody was really assholery. But I guess I can give it to Zenday for being an ass for two seconds. You know, um, telling RJ he's in his office when it's not really his office, and then talking shit about his drawing. But then RJ, um, RJ, Ridge told um, Zenday the truth, and he did apologize to RJ, and um, which is good. Well, like I said in my review, you know, I would have liked um, Zenday to have in a uh, storyline, something like that. Um, but, you know, it's good, because I didn't want him to look like an asshole, because he seemed like a really sweet guy. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, and plus that would just drag on the storyline even longer, but anyways. On to the couples of the week. You, you probably know who I chose. Yes, I did choose Dimitri Von Lorschner and Leo Stark. I know, y'all probably are like, bitch, there's other couples on this damn ship. I don't care. They were come on. You have to admit they were like one of they were the the best couple on all of soaps in the world uh, this week. And stuff. But you know they handled Uncle EJ perfectly. You know EJ was ready to throw the whole library at them, like he said last week. <laughs> like he told Rafe last week he was going to do to Dimitri. But, you know, they got him to stick to the deal, even though he ripped up the deal, and Sloan went there to make sure he went through with the deal. Uh, didn't have me in my feelings again with their goodbyes. <sighs> I'm trying to cry. <laughs> and um, they're working on blackmail together um, to get, you know, working up, but working on blackmail together to get what they want. Because that's what's important. They want to be together. So they have to blackmail the hell out of Salon and throw in Melinda as well. Um, so why not? <laughs> and Dimitri is um, a bad influence. <laughs> you know, Leo's showing some kind of conscience. But Dimitri's like, no, don't go there, baby. Oh, Pookie Bear. I'm sorry. Their nicknames for each other is Pookie Bear. Same um, nickname, but so so what? Um, but, you know, Leo still has the magic penis, um, uh, nickname, well, I guess that's, um, not really a nickname for his penis, but anyways, I'm gonna, <laughs> but, um, I forgot what I was gonna say, but <laughs> I know I say that a lot. <laughs> That was happened because, you know, I just started imagining the magic penis. Anyways, Bold and the Beautiful, I had to give it to Eric and Donna, of course, because they got their one more night together. And, you know, I, like I said, I enjoyed the flashbacks of them together. So cute. 
things in air. Ooh, it's a hot, hot, hot. I mean, he's still a gorgeous older gentleman, but whew, damn. <laughs> he always had a little gray in him, but it was, it was kind of funny to see him with the black beard and not a gray one. But, um, <clears throat> that's so cute. Ride or die, just stick together. And Donna's just right there for him. That's just, that's just real true love. You know, because, you know, if this was another couple or so bopper, um, Donna might be happy he's dying so she can steal his money. But, you know, they're not even married. Eric never even said, hey, let's rush and get married so I can be married before we die. That's some shit from another soap. <laughs> Anyways, and on General Hospital, I guess I'll give it to Brooklyn and Chase because they got engaged. And they didn't tell Lois, even though she was the one that had the final push for Chase to up his timeline of proposing. <laughs> and the ring is beautiful, Brooklyn. Chase has beautiful taste. Thumbs up. You got a good girl. And everybody's that he, they told are very happy for him. So just um, Chase's dad, brother, um, niece, and... Um, potential sister-in-law please don't don't do this to me been through enough with this show anyways and they're also really cute you know i shipped them early on before they even were really really a couple you know back when they were um pretending to be bailey's parents but um you know they kind of went downhill with that little crappy music Sort of thing, but this week they were just really adorable. Just reminded me why I liked them in the first place. So, but then they had Violet singing and Chase playing the guitar. I'm like, don't do this to me. Don't, 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 don't know. <laughs> but, anyways, <laughs> on to best dress of the week. It was kind of hard because all those beautiful dresses at Eric's party. Oh my gosh, I love everybody's outfits and you know i ri originally was gonna go with hope's outfit from earlier in the week she had on this like brown or creamish jacket with um this um white top and it like had a little lace up top and i guess it was pants i didn't get to see the full thing but i'm assuming it's pants um, but then, you know, Eric's party and everybody with all the dresses and stuff. But I had to go with Brooke's dress, that white dress with the little squigglies. And then it's like kind of like see-through and parts. I thought it was beautiful. Strapless, which is my favorite kind of anything. Yeah, and it had the little ruffles at the bottom. It's like, oh, that is so cute. Oh, yeah. And I started take. I think I mentioned this last week. I started taking pictures. <laughs> <laughs> on my phone, I was like, oh, I like that outfit, let me take that, that might be best dress of the week later on, um, <laughs> and I was just like, I just had so many pictures, and luckily, I was able to snatch one up of Brooke, um, the full dress, so I was like, wait, hold on, what's that, <laughs> you know, because me and Paramount Plus be fighting with Bold and beautiful. So when I finally get the episode to play, I don't like to rewind or pause or anything. So it's just a hit or miss with the pictures. <laughs> but anyways, and on General Hospital, I give it to my girl Ava Jerome walking in. <laughs> was she had, like this silky blue shirt? And I was like, oh, she had like a little white shirt underneath it too. And then she had like tucked in with that black long black skirt. It was gorgeous and had the coat over top of her with a little fur coming over but i thought the whole thing was fur but good thing i went back and watched that scene because <laughs> i would have thought oh lordy oh i didn't uh i was, the picture i had the picture on my phone i took a picture of that hulu and i don't fight that much anymore so i was able to rewind it and get that photo but i did really watch the scene later too um <laughs> I thought the whole thing was a fur, but it's just around the corner. But it just showed, you know, Ava being badassy, Ava Jerome. I thought it was beautiful. Anyways, and on Days of Our Lives, I'll give it to Holly um, for her black and red dress that she had on Friday's episode. Well, it was mostly red. <laughs> I, now that I think about it, what is some kind of design on it? And then she had like, I don't know if it was really dark blue or a black 
jean jacket. That looks really cute in her hair. Oh, speaking of which, I love Hope has the best hair this week. She's really, really doing a lot with that short cut. It looked really beautiful. Yeah, but, you know, I honestly, I wasn't really paying that much attention to anybody's outfits <laughs> on um, Days of Our Lives, but I just happened to have rewatched, well, not rewatch all of Friday. I rewatched um, EJ and Nicole's scene from Friday, and I happened to saw part of um, Holly and Tate's scenes, and I saw that, and I was like, oh, yeah, I did really like that, but. Anyway, and for the quotes of the week, this is most, um, I give it to Christina, what she said to Blaze. It's more of like a life quote more than a soap opera quote. But she said, everybody is on their own journey. I'm like, I like that. It's very true. We are all, you know, have our own paths of where we want to go. Definitely. So, I give it that. And not so much, <laughs> um life quote but you know you know i love leo's quotes he has the best lines um it's like i've it's like i've been given willy wonka's golden ticket of blackmail and i'm and i'm throwing it away oh lordy i messed that up start over again <laughs> it's like i've been given willy wonka's golden ticket of blackmail and i'm throwing away the whole chocolate bar yeah so i just like really sums up how Leo is right now because he feels for Nicole with the baby. Losing her baby, but I think he'll all change his tune. So I think EJ's gonna give him that black eye. I saw him with those <laughs> that promo when he goes and sees Salome. So <laughs> we shall see. Or maybe it was Nicole that punched him. Hmm. I don't know what plot twist. Anyways, <laughs> um, the bowl and the beautiful, I give it to Eric. Yeah, I know. It's like, Eric gets a lot of quotes, but Eric has a lot of quotes, good quotes. Um, I had to go back and get this quote exactly, because I, I didn't get it quite right the first time, which is good, because, yeah, it was nowhere close to what I thought he said, but he said, if uh, he's talking to Hope and Thomas, um, he said, if you two make each other happy, go with that. Life is too short not to, which is really good. He was um, talking about them being together, and he was like, you know, it's not much of a scandal to me. Um, you guys, you guys look good together. I'm like, oh, that's so sweet, Kurt. I don't know, then again, he's dying, so. <laughs> no, but I really like Hope and Thomas together, and Eric does seem to have a thing for the Logan, so I don't think... He has anything against um his he doesn't have anything against his son being with Brooke, so why would he have something against Thomas being with um Hope? Yeah, and his daughter is Logan, so <laughs> and his grandson's a Logan also. But anyways, on to shockers of the week. Mm, wasn't many sh I didn't really was shocked by anything really this week, but um uh, I guess I'll give it to Dave with Dimitri going to prison. I'm like, he really going to prison? <laughs> like, I thought something was going to happen in the last hour for him to not actually end up there. Though I don't think he's going to be there for very long because something's going to happen that he gets out. Whether it's Leo blackmailing Sloan to get him out or something it's going to come out to uh, for him to get out because, you know, nobody really stays in prison unless they're done with your character, and I don't see them being done with Dimitri. Um, <clears throat> but he has some company with Lucas and Clyde. We shall see how that goes. <laughs> and um, I guess it, um, Bold um, will actually... Um, I don't know, maybe I should have switched these two with Bold and Jake. I don't know how to think about it. But for Bold, I said, um, Zenday telling Eric, um, telling him, Zenday telling, Rich telling Zenday about Eric dying. Um, I figured, I knew Zenday would learn eventually because, you know, Eric was going to, you know, die. But, you know, I thought they were going to drag it out a little more. But, you know, since they moved up the timetable with the party, I guess that's why I did that. But, hmm. And I was in the hospital. I said Blaze kissing Christina. Nothing really shocking. Not shocking to me happened. 
on General Hospital, but, you know, I figured Blaze and Christina were going to eventually kiss, but, you know, the way that General Hospital likes to tease with couples, I thought they would drag that out a little bit. Not that they're actually a couple, they just kissed. But, um, <laughs> but I was like, wow, General Hospital's actually going to do a gay storyline, but, you know, it's just a kiss tour. You never know. Something could happen. But anyways, um, that's something to look forward to, hopefully. I, I really enjoy Blaze and Christina's um, chemistry. I think it works. And I enjoyed their scenes this week also. Speaking of scenes of the week, I did not let um, you said as um, a scene of the week. Um, for some reason, I don't know. Now that I think about it, I'm thinking about those scenes again, I don't know, but um, I, well, first of all, I gave the scenes of the week. Well, first of all, I was going to give it to Stefan and Chad on Days of Our Lives, um, talking about wanting Clyde dead. I don't know, just something about those scenes just, like, really, like, really looked good with Stefan and, not just because Stefan and Chad looked really hot, but, you know, brothers, um, being together on a subject on something and like I said it would be really cool to see those two and EJ ganging up together to kill Clyde Stepper looking but after watching Friday's episode with Nicole telling EJ how she doesn't want to have another baby those scenes were just really awesome Ari just hits it out of the park every time with all of Nicole's pain and stuff that's just it's like you have well, even if you don't like Nicole, I think you still feel a little something something for her. Right? I don't know, unless you're cold hearted. <laughs> but on General Hospital, I gave it to Ava confronting Cyrus. And the scenes weren't really that long, but I thought it was funny how um, you know, she was working him and then he's like, Well, I have an alibi. Like, What's your alibi? <laughs> Ava got mad and walked away. Yeah, it's just I don't know, you know I don't know why I would think this, but you know, Mara and Jeff, they just have this kind of chemistry to them. Now I think about it when I rewatch that scene, it's like, mm-hmm, I liked it. But but then again, you know, Mara and Jeff, they're just those kind of actors that, you know, can really have chemistry with the mom. And, you know, just every scene that they're in with whoever, it doesn't matter, you know, who that person is, they will shine like a diamond. Quoting um, Rihanna there. <laughs> you know, bold and beautiful. I gave it to Eric's last moments, you know, that weird silence um, when he realizes that, you know, he didn't win the showdown was kind of like, okay, that's like the longest silence in soap history. <laughs> I thought something was wrong with my TV. But then, you know, when he told Rich, you know, I was like, that's the best thing anybody the, that um anybody has done for me. And then, you know, him collapsing and everybody rushing to him. It's like, wow. And he's like, it's my time. And then um, they should have definitely, like, showed, like, the light or something. Stephanie could have been there to welcome him to heaven, health, wherever they go. Um, yeah, you know I watch weird jokes. Anyways, storylines of the week. I, for General Hospital, I give it to the Pikeman stuff. So it's like we're finally getting somewhere with that storyline. General Hospital's been listening to my reviews. Like, you're saying, what is this Pikeman? Tell me, what, you know, take me in the direction of this. But, you know, finally understanding, well, there's still, I still have more questions um, than I've had answers, but it was really good introducing, you know, Brennan and, you know, how he's with Pikeman and what's he trying to do and stuff. So, I thought it was really good. And also getting to... Closer for Anna to, you know, think that she has some closure with the whole foresight stuff, but still, eh. but um, I'm interested in this Brennan because I was hoping that, well, first I was hoping that Pikeman would be, you know, somebody that we knew from the past bringing him in, but you know, I'm not against this new villain. I um, villains are 
one of my favorite things about not just soap operas, but you know, shows and movies in general. There's just so much you can do with the characters. And I really like this guy. I really think that Brandon could be really cool. Hopefully the um writers don't mess it up. But even if they mess it up, um the actor at Florida, his name just went over me. But um he's really great. He's um really um really really did great in this scene this week. Anyways, and I'll join a hospital. Dimitri and Leo's love story. They're just so cute. I just love them. I know you you guys probably want me to shut the fuck up about their their love story, but I love them. Definitely makes um I hope they could really be a real couple and have dates and stuff when all this is over. And um, Bold and the Beautiful, you know, the only storyline that happened this week was about Eric's demise and everything. Uh, but episodes of the week, I did give it to Bold and the Beautiful's Friday. They did really awesome with Eric dying and the last words and everything. I love, I enjoyed the party, all the dresses and everybody coming together. That was really cool. And Joe Hospital, um... I really enjoyed Tuesday's episodes with Brandon discussing, you know, his business with Pikeman, Anna, and Sunny, Foresight. I'm just imagining him burning over Foresight. That's something that we could have could have seen. Oh, Lordy. And Ava and Cyrus the scenes, of course, and Blaze and Christina and Laura and um Cyrus also. I didn't put that down, but you know, their scenes and Cyrus just wants some love. Give Cyrus some love, Laura. Such a mean sister. No, I'm joking. <laughs> and for Days of Our Lives, I gave it to Friday's episode. Um, of course, you know, Dimitri and Leo. And just, you know, just all my favorite couples on the show at the moment were on Friday's episode. Dimitri, Leo, um, AJ, Nicole, Johnny Schnell, um, potential Holly and Tate. And it's only a matter of time before they get together. Though I'm sure some people are probably annoyed the hell with Holly because she's trying to come between Johnny and Chanel when they're finally looks like they're going to have a relationship <laughs> without being interrupted by the devil, Johnny's twin sister, or Wendy, or Alex. <laughs> but, um, yeah, there's a lot going on. Oh, Lord. Those two. And um, Roman looked like he was suspicious of Simone because he found out, you know, that she was, you know, mad about the DNA test. But, you know, it's Roman. He could have just been looking that way. And then Simone thinks that she has it all together. But, you know, and comes Leo next week. I'm sure he's going to confront her about the baby secret. So enjoy by your last. Oh, well, no, I forgot. At the end of Friday's episode, Eric did get that voicemail from the lawyer that um, Melinda was dealing with about the um, abortion. No, abortion. The adoption. About the adoption. Um, saying he was sorry about the adoption falling through. So, so how are you going to explain that? Hmm. Good luck with that. But we're at the end. Time for the worst and the best of the week. It was really hard to choose because every show, I don't think any show was really horrible than the other. I think they all had, you know, more better. That's not a word. <laughs> well, anyways, they they all had their good, a lot of good to it and some not that much bad to it than usual. <sighs> I kept going back and forth, but... <sighs> I would give it to the bold and the beautiful this week. Um, like I said, it was a really great show this week with everything with um, um, Eric's demise, but it was missing a little of what the other shows were having. Um, well, I'm glad that they do focus a lot on Eric since he is a legacy character with him dying and everything, but you know. When I watch it, so, you know, I like to variety, see a variety of storylines. You know, they can have one big one where, you know, that's me, that's a big focus of the week, but, you know, have a little of the others on the side, but, you know, not much. Everything was just Eric, 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 Eric. Um, 
the other shows had a little more variety. But, you know, that's not always a bad thing, you know, since, you know, this is supposed to be Eric's last week, maybe. I don't know if they're really caring telling Eric off. I still think I still don't think he's dying. But they also of course I know I know kinda of hypocritical in a way that I keep saying this, but the repeated dialogue does drive me crazy. Everybody was literally having the same conversations they've been having for the last few weeks and they just add in Bridget and Thorne um into those conversations. And it made me sad. Like the whole show was just so this 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 um it made me want to cry. That's a lot of eighteen minute episodes. That's five eighteen minute episodes. You know, <laughs> I didn't get any sort of laughter out of it. That's just you know, <sighs> that's so sad. <laughs> and like I said, I don't really believe Eric is dying. I believe it when I see it. You know, but you know, I watch. The cuckoo crazy soap operas that just kill off people and bring them back all the time. You know, Days Our Lives, um, um, th- um, Passion Spitted, Poor Charles. Um, yeah, so I believe when I see it. And no Sheila and Deacon. This is three weeks in a row. They have, no, it's been a month since we've seen them together. And I know you're like, shut up. They were on, like, every episode for a few months. Yeah, which I understand, but still hurts. Not seeing them. But, yeah, there's nothing really for them right now, but still. I don't care. Uh, And Eric didn't get his dry, extra dry martini before he passed. So, that's just wrong. Anyways, that's what I say. Anyways, and the best soap of the week. Like I said, it was really hard to uh, really get to pick, but I went, this, oh lordy, this third week, third, fourth week in a row, I give it to Days of Our Lives. I didn't check before I started the video, I meant to check. Um, but I gave it to Days of Our Lives because there were so many great performances this week with just... Not just pain, but, you know, fetid upness. <laughs> you know, you see the pain with Nicole and Wendy, you know, showed it, even though I don't really give a fuck about Lee. Um, you know, Stefan was um, frustrated with, you know, trying to help Gabby. You know, Stephanie going off on Chad, really great stuff. And Jada with her little moments of sadness about her ex-husband, which, you know, I'm going to need a little more information. You know, where do you think this ex-husband is? Um, um, I just have to um, figure that out. Um, <laughs> you know, EJ did great performances too. Uh, um, Dimitri, Leo, also great stuff. And um, Holly really showed her um, mini Nicole-ness going off on tape. <laughs> That's just so funny. And um, they really had me on the edge of my seat about the DNA test. Like, I was, I was like, there's no way that, you know, it's going to come back that it was really Nicole's um, son at the moment. But, you know, I was just trying to figure out, you know, how, you know, you know, how is this going to not come out right now? You know, did Sloan do something, Pierce, Melinda, um, some freak accident, something or another, I don't know. But I thought that was really good. And they showed a lot of romance. You know, Days of Our Last has been kind of in the romance um, department. It's been a lot of action lately um, with, you know, Lee dying and um, Nicole and her baby and everything. But, you know, they showed romance. It was really cute, especially with Johnny and Chanel. We finally got them, see them all hugged up on each other. And also people didn't like don't like Rafe and Jada, but it was good to see them together and actually see, you know, them out of their work uniforms and talking about life. I still need to look more on this ex-husband stuff, but um, not to history. I learned something new this week, you know. I didn't know that Eric had an uncle named Eric who was a nasty ass. Uh, I don't need to talk about more about what that was about. <laughs> and, um, no repeated dialogue. 
that's one thing about Days of Our Lives. They, of course, you know, still covered, you know, talking about the same stuff, but, you know, there's not a lot of, they will still talk about the same stuff, but not the exact same words and not in the same span of time, you know, it's spread out and they find different ways to say it, which that's one thing that I do like about the real lives, you know, and they don't really go over the same stuff over and over again. Like, yeah, like, um, Bold and GH do so much. I'm not sure about Young and the Rest because I haven't watched it all too, too much, but, you know, the times I have watched, yeah, they did bring up some stuff, saying a lot of the same stuff over and over again, driving me crazy. But anyways, I'm gonna shut up. Do you agree with my choices? Let me know in the comments below. And also, um, what do you think about my choices? And if you, um, have different choices that didn't come out like I wanted to but anyways <laughs> anyways if you like this video hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already to watch more um really weird awkward highlight show <laughs> videos as well as my weekly reviews of all three soaps and speaking of which if you haven't watched them um, this week you can check them out. I have them linked at the end of this video. See how I um, see what else I had to say about this week. Because there's some other stuff that happened that I did not talk here. So do that. And and um if you missed last week's video, you can check that out. It's linked at the end of this video as well. And I would like to thank you again for watching. I appreciate it as always. Love you guys. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Bye.